What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. And for today's WWE news video, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. This is not what I was expecting, but there's there's a little there's something there's something to talk about, including the latest on WWE expecting to have more stadium shows moving forward in 2023. Wonder, uh, <gasps> excuse me. Wonder what that's about. Um, a uh, former ruthless aggression superstar in WWE wants to come back as a commentator. One, what's what's going on there? And this first one that I'm going to talk about: NXT superstar L.A. Knight officially done with NXT. Apparently he's being called up to the main roster, but he also has a faction as well. Wonder what that's about. So let's actually talk about that for a minute. So if you guys do not know or don't remember, LA Knight debuted in NXT. Uh, I, I, it was at Stan, it was at Takeover Stand and Deliver last year, and his he made head he made he, he made headlines all throughout social media. And, um, funny enough, if you guys do, do not remember L.A. Knight, he was known as, uh, Eli Drake from TNA Impact. And I do remember that a little bit. I do remember the name Eli Drake just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um. And, uh, excuse me. And because of the fact that he had won multiple championships in, in TNA... Many had had assumed that he was in. He was one of the most obvious can you know candidates to be on to be on on the main roster. And uh, I I mean I mean he he can talk the talk. He can walk the walk, and still and still. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I am like so tired right now. He can talk the talk. He can walk the walk, and he can pull it off perfectly. And apparently, he's a perfect fit to be on Raw or SmackDown. But, but apparently, he won't be using his skills in the ring for a little bit, as apparently he's been called up as a manager. And apparently, um, apparently the apparently he has his own faction. Alongside uh, Mace and Mansoor formed the faction known as Night Model Management, and apparently, uh, and apparently, Fight uh, Fightful Select had has now confirmed that LA Knight is indeed done with done with NXT, and he'll be on the main roster from now on. <sighs> Excuse me. Excuse me, sorry guys, I'm like so tired right now. Anyway, anyway, uh, big shout out to to Fightful, no copyrights. You guys know how this works with the algorithm, and you guys know he spent over a year in in NXT, which he signed back in February of 2021. I think it was I think it was right during uh, right around uh, WrestleMania season. And also, guys, if you guys hear music in, in the background. I've got Zoro's Domain, the night version uh, theme, um, from Breath of the Wild on YouTube. No, no copyrights. You guys know how this works with the algorithm, and you guys know what's good. Anyway, um, <sighs> and uh, while it is true that he didn't win any official WWE titles during his time in NXT. He did win the million dollar title at NXT TakeOver In Your House 2 last year, but it was only a brief run before he lost it to Cameron Grimes, who then returned it to Ted DiBiase Sr. Which, honestly, having LA Knight on, on the main roster, um, excuse me, um, 
it's been long overdue. When when he got signed to NXT, honestly, we were expecting him to be on on the main roster within a few months. Nope, took over a year. Um, but um. But yeah, but yeah, there was a video on on YouTube and <sighs> and apparently uh, Ellie Knight and Mansoor introduced Mace to the Knight Model Management uh, faction, and apparently I guess now they're gonna become baby faces. I guess supposedly so. Um. I honestly don't know who exactly who else would be in the faction. But I can tell you one I can tell you one thing right now. LA Knight on SmackDown will be very, very interesting. I'm very curious as to as to what he could have in store for SmackDown, it's possible that that we could see, you know, Ellie Knight go after <sighs> go after the the inter the Intercontinental title and the tag, you know, and Mason Monster go after the tag titles, or 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 if they had the balls, the balls big enough, they could step up to the bloodline. Winners take all, which is a possibility, but who knows? But who knows? But LA Knight on on SmackDown on the main roster, it's about fucking time. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say is it's about fucking time. Now for this one. Apparently, there's gonna be some more stadium shows moving forward. Um, yeah. Yeah, apparently it's gonna be happening uh, more, more in the future. And by the end, and apparently by 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 the end of this year, WWE will have hosted eight stadium shows in 2022, including including their show in the UK, which will be slated for September. Um, and apparently, according to uh, Andrew Zarian of the Mad Men podcast, big shout, big shout out, no copyrights. You guys know how it works with the algorithm, as always. Uh, apparently, WWE is aiming to make this number the new normal, with WWE President Nick Khan reportedly pushing for WWE to run more stadiums. And apparently, Zarian had, had, had sent a, a tweet saying, a source over, over at WWE mentioned that they intend to run more stadium shows moving forward in 2023. Just for reference, 2022 has eight stadium events. The goal is to make this the new norm. This is a Nick Khan approach when it comes to premium live events. The scale, the scalability of large stadiums is beneficial is beneficial when it comes to having live attendance over 15,000. Um. The event does doesn't have to be a sellout of fifty thousand, but you but now you have room to do twenty to thirty five thousand thousand shows more often, leading to much much higher revenue and higher level of excitement for the event. Um, and of course, of course, too, the most recent was WrestleMania thirty eight, which emanated from AT and T Stadium in Dallas on April second and third, which uh, which had which was touted as the highest grossing event in WWE history, which is in, which is insane. But what boggles my mind is the fact is is how many people attended across both nights. Across both nights, we had on on night one there was a grand total of seventy seven thousand eight hundred and ninety nine people. And then, and then, uh, and then on night two, had seventy eight thousand four hundred fifty three, which is a grand total of let's see, 
Let's see. Let's see. Which is a grand total of 156,352 people across both nights showed up. Which is awesome. Which is pretty awesome. I, I, I would say that's a new record, but really it's not. It's really, te technically it's not a new record because of the fact that because of the fact that AT&T Stadium in Dallas at WrestleMania 32 still holds the record. But I have a feeling next year's WrestleMania, that that record is going to be broken. I can almost guarantee you that right now. And funny enough, um, and funny enough, over fifty over 59,000 fans have pre-registered their tickets within the first 24 hours of the show's announcement, which is insane. Um... Their next stadium show, obviously you guys know, know will take place at Money in the Bank, which will air on July 2nd, and then SummerSlam at Nissan Stadium in Nashville on July 30th, which is going to be quite the interesting, uh, which is going to be quite quite the interesting uh, show, I will admit, um, because if you because if you think about it, if you if you think about it, when it comes to premium live events at big stadiums, such as AT&T Stadium, such as, you know, you know, you know, Nissan Stadium, you know, you know, the Mercedes-Benz, you know, the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, you think about WrestleMania, you think about, you, mostly, it's, it's mostly like WrestleMania, you know, where... Where it has to be the big show, you know, you know, you know, the biggest, you know, show in in, you know, in all of sports. And now, now with SummerSlam, you know, coming in, into the fall, with Royal Rumble coming in, into the fall, I wouldn't be be surprised if if they did that for Survivor Series in 2023, because you guys know this year's Royal Rumble, not Royal Rumble, this year's Survivor Series will take place at the TD Garden in Boston, which is going to be a very interesting uh, show with the fact that now Roman Reigns holds both the WWE title and the Universal title, and potentially the Usos or RK-Bro could hold both the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team titles, which rumor has it that whoever wins will be receiving a brand new title that, sig that signifies the unification of both the Raw and the SmackDown Tag Team titles, which... It, it doesn't make sense. I'm just going to be honest here. It really doesn't make sense. Because. This has been a name stay for. Since. Since the. Since the brand split. In 20. In 2016. Since the draft in 2016. Where. Where we had the Raw and Smackdown tag team titles. Initiated. And. It. It, it just doesn't make sense. It literally does not make sense. But. I will admit, but I will admit, um, we may end up seeing, seeing the tag titles and, uh, and the WWE Universal title get defended in Survivor Series, so the question is, who would think, who would step up to Roman Reigns? Who would step up to the Usos at Survivor Series if, if they're still champion? If they are still champion? That, we'll find out at some point, but... Honestly, I can't wait. I can't. I really can't wait to see what what the future holds for holds in 2023. But now the question is, who wants to come back as a commentator? And I said ruthless aggression. That can only mean one thing. It's somebody for that that de that debuted right before WWE went HD, like 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 we're in now. There's only one man. And that man is Santino Marella. If you guys do not remember him, he debuted in, in WWE in 2007 when they did a show in uh, in Milan, Italy back in 2007. I don't rem remember the night. I don't re remember the date. Um, Uh, 
April 16th, 2007 at the Dutch Forum in Milan, Italy. Um, which is which was an interesting uh, show to say to say the very least. This was where uh, where Santino debuted in in WWE, which had so many. It it ended up getting it, it ended up getting uh, uh, mixed reviews. Actually, funny enough, um, and. Uh, what is seriously my lap? Seriously, the ad, these ads need to stop. The card, as far as the matches go, had quite the interesting. Uh, it was quite the interesting card. We had Santino Morella obviously debuting debuting during during this time. Face off against Umaga for the for the for the Intercontinental Title in a no hold barred match with the help of Bobby Lashley, of course. We had the world's greatest tag team, Charlie House and Shell Benjamin, defeating Carlito and Ric Flair with Tori Wilson at, at ringside. Johnny Nitro with Molina at ringside defeated Eugene. If you guys remember him, uh, he was a weird dude, uh, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, Lance Cade with Trevor Murdoch at ringside defeated Jeff Hardy with his brother Matt at ringside. The masterpiece Chris Masters defeated Super Crazy, and the main event... Was John Cena defeating Rated RKO Edge and Rainier in a two-on-one handicap match? This was a weird one. I this was like the weirdest like show ever because the because the review the reviews that they got was mixed reviews, and apparently now and since then Santino has won has won several championships in WWE. He's won like. Two or three intercontinental titles. He's won like one or like one or two un, uh, United States titles. He even also won the tag team titles alongside um, alongside. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was it v Kofi? No. 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 Vlad. I, I. I think it was Vladimir Kozlov was the guy's name. But um, okay. For some reason, my okay. For some reason, my laptop. My laptop. Be, my laptop is being stupid. So I'm gonna try. And restart this thing. This thing is this laptop is being stupid. So while I so while I restart it, I'm gonna give let you guys tell you guys just a little bit about um about about Santino because his character in WWE was actually kind of interesting because when he debuted in in WWE he became he became Intercontinental Champion as as I had as I had talked about but but what you guys don't know is the things that he had done. In WWE, whether it was in the ring, or back, or or doing backstage segments, he had done some weird shit. He flirted with the Bellas at one point. Um, supposedly he he supposedly he, he was dating Beth Phoenix, which was an interesting uh, tag team. Glam uh, Glamorella. If you guys remember the team name Glamorella, it was interesting. He even. Uh, Competed at WrestleMania 25 in the uh, in a battle royal to determine who would be Miss WrestleMania. I you if you know you know, but it was just so pathetic. To be honest, it was just weird. It was weird as fuck. But that was what made Santino. You know Santino. You know, you know that's what made him entertaining. And supposedly, he wants to be back in, back in, back in the WWE as a commentator. And once I get back to to my laptop, once I'm able to anyway, because I just restarted my, I had to restart the laptop. I will be able to explain why, why he wants to do it, what's going on, and all that. So hopefully we can. 
give it a second, guys. Guys, I apologize. My laptop is just really being is just really being really stupid right now. So let's see. And once again, big shout out to uh, to to the to the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild for the uh, for for the Zor for the for the uh, for the Zora's Domain song. Here we go, finally. Finally, but yeah, but yeah. Anyway, it, April sixteenth was an in, was an interesting time for WWE. It was it, it, it was in, interesting, but finally. Finally, we got it. Anyway, um, but funny enough, he actually competed as well in in it. All the way, he actually competed um, in an elimination chamber match for the world heavyweight title. Uh, excuse me, and he and he was in the final two, and it was even also in in the final two of the twenty eleven Royal Rumble, which had forty. Men, so he came. He he's came close to become to have become you know a main event star, but he just couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. But but he had appeared on the Canadian Comedy Hall of Fame podcast. Big shout out, no copyrights. You guys know how it works with the algorithm. He had he had he had talked about his current uh, his current uh, sp uh, sporty act schedule, which included uh, trips his trips to. To Puerto Rico to come to wrestle for fellow former WWE stars Primo and Epico Cologne. If you guys remember them, hell of a uh, hell of a team to say the very least. He he said quote he said quote I pick and choose I pick and choose maybe one one every couple months if it's a destination I like. For example, yesterday there was a show in in, in Puerto Rico, but you know Primo and Primo and Epico. So I'm like, yeah. For those guys, I'll go down wherever. I'll wrestle 10, 15 minutes. But it's the whole weekend down there with the guys getting to see see the kids and families. You know, catching up and shooting the breeze. And all and all that stuff. Um, he even also also talked about you know you know his time in WWE, wanting to come you know wanting to. You know, you know, on, on whether or not he would like to come back to WWE, and and he said, I coach wrestling for years. I was on a show called Aftermath on Sports Network. You know, we talked about the week that was in WWE. So I'm still around very much. Now I'm doing commentary mostly. I do commentary for Destiny Wrestling, PTW in in Poland, a company in Montreal. MEW. Basically, I'm just trying to get more reps. I did I did some for Impact, and eventually I want to go to WWE in some capacity as a commentator. Um. So, even though so even though he he debuted in WWE in 2007, he was still a part of their a part of their developmental territory in 2005, and a for, and apparently and, a, and unfortunately left WWE in 2016. Um. And, uh, his last appearance, um, his, his last appearance in WWE was at, was in the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble match as, uh, as, as his, uh, twin sister Santina Morella. That, that was what I was talking, well, what I was re uh, referring to with the whole Miss WrestleMania thing, but honestly, um... But honestly, I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, I truly believe that. Um, I truly believe that he should that they should he should definitely come back. I would love to see San Santino come back because by him back in WWE. I mean, he. I mean, given the fact that we have three commentators on Raw, we could have three three commentators on SmackDown. It's possible, or or we can have three commentators on NXT, which is a high possibility. But I'm not. But I'm not gonna. 
I'm not really gonna like like sugarcoat it and say, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna come back, but um But I w but I will admit, uh, Santino coming back if he if he does come back, I think would I, I think it would re really be nice for him because even though even though even though he he's only he's only forty eight, we could potentially see him, um, you know, back in in the in the ring in so in some capacity, but only time will tell. But that brings me to the question of the day. Do you guys want to see Santino Morella back in WWE? And if so, and if so, do you want to see him on commentary or back in the ring? Let me know down in the comments below, and that will do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, and you guys want to see more WWE news videos, which get posted every Thursday, Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys do not miss out on any new, any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. The links will be in the description below. And as always, if you guys have any fan mail that you guys want to send me, you guys want me to open it up on the channel, the info will be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.